Peter is a, a scholar at the University of Leeds in the United Kingdom, currently pursuing a master's of international and European human rights law. He is um, a 2016 Cody Diploma graduate and has been a volunteer with the Uganda National Association of Cerebral Palsy since 2011. Uh, so he will tell you now about uh, the experience that he has had in that capacity with uh, with the uh, National Association or UNAC, as the shorthand goes. Over to you, Peter. Oh. Thank you, Julian. Uh, I'm going to present to you my case study on uh, passive self mobilizing for meaningful participation in Uganda. The content of my presentation is Master of Cerebral Palsy within the Ghanaian Conflicts, the Ghana National Association of Cerebral Palsy, Inclusion of Persons with Cerebral Palsy, the Challenges, and I will make some conclusions. Over the years, Persons with Cerebral Palsy and their family members we are marginalized both in the disability movement and in the general community. This is partly because the community believes that cerebral palsy is caused by character aspects such as curses, misfortunes, or unfaithfulness in marriage. While in the disability community, they believe that since person is cerebral palsy, manifest other kinds of disability, like physical disability. Those people from such categories would represent their views. In Uganda, the constitution, the disability to 2006, and as a signatory to the UNCRPD, discrimination on the basis of disability is generally prohibited. However, this couldn't guarantee inclusion of persons with cerebral palsy in their community activities. So, in 2011, we, decide, we decided to start mobilizing persons with cerebral palsy, empowering them to realize their rights and to claim their space for inclusion in all community activities. So, what happened? In 2011, two youth disabled persons were identified, they were empowered, they were trained in leadership and project management, and were interested to lead a, a pilot project that aimed at mobilizing passers with cerebral palsy in the communities of Kampala and Wakisa in central Uganda. At the end of the pilot project, 142 members were mobilized. In order to sustain these efforts, it was resolved to register an organization, which is the Ghana National Association Association of Cerebral Palsy in 2013. Uh, as you can see in this photo, this is one of the mobilization activity carried out in, in Lira District. You can see a mix of persons with cerebral palsy and other categories of disabilities and people with disabilities. The, the, the trick UNAC uses is that we rely on contact people in the communities to lead us to families of persons with cerebral palsy because since they are marginalized and ex excluded in the community, it is very hard to reach them and identify them. So, once persons with cerebral palsy were mobilized, they were trained in 
advocacy and and also they were trained in realizing their rights. This was important because most of them didn't know that they have rights like other people in their community to be included in their community activities. And it was also important to empower them to promote these rights and to uphold them and to ensure that they continue to participate in the community even after the project had ended. It was also important for us to mobilize allies whereby we identified disabled persons organizations. We also found other non-government organizations and government departments which helped us to push our initiative of claiming space for inclusion of persons with disability in all their community activities. But since our project we are targeting specific areas and we aim at raising awareness to the whole country. We also use media campaigns like radio talk shows, TV talk shows, we produce brochures and other IEC materials to ensure that we can reach a, a bigger audience. As a result of this initiative, two youth with several persons joined the National Union of Disabled Persons Youth Committee in Uganda. This is a committee that brings the voice of all youth with disabilities in Uganda. This was important because most persons with several persons are youth and uh, it is important that they, they really get important issues concerning youth and also benefits from different youth interventions in their communities. So also, some youth, some persons with disabilities who became very empowered, became local leaders in their community, local councils. They, they are joining local council guaranteed that now persons with disabilities in their communities are aware of different government programs going on in their communities and they also testify that their peers in the council give them time to speak and also accessibility is being improved in these local councils. The family members, this was actually a testimony from the local leaders that as a result of awareness raising, now they are able to also tap the members of persons with disabled persons because the community now can associate with them. There is also changing attitude in the community whereby people believe that disabled person is a disability which is not contagious. However, that's why the, our, this initiative and its effort, the politicizing of participation in Uganda hinders effective inclusion of persons with disabled persons in their communities. Because in some communities, if you don't support the government, they don't include you. In other communities, if you, if you support the government, they, they automatically exclude you. So it is still complicated for this initiative to fully guarantee participation of persons with disabled persons. We are also facing competition from other disabled persons organizations and other NGOs for the shrinking funding opportunities and also their dependence on donors compromise our ability to push mainly for political participation of persons with disabled so, from this initiative, we realized that, and I would, all, I would also expect to appreciate that uh, within, within the marginalized community, there are some people who are further marginalized. Because persons, we are even marginalized within the 
the stability community where they could seek refuge. And also, it was important that persons with cerebral palsy take lead of this initiative from the initiative, from the inception of the initiative. There were persons with cerebral palsy, even the photo I showed you, most of those people were persons with cerebral palsy who are leading the initiative. And that really changed the attitude of the community and their family members and even persons with cerebral palsy to become empowered to accept themselves and also to push the initiative. And also, by granting participation of the marginalized people or excluded people in the community, the benefit always goes beyond the targeted people because he targeted persons with cerebral palsy, but now their family members are also included in their community activities. So thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Peter. Um, again, um, a, a, a quite inspiring story of um, a group of, of marginalized people or people who were excluded am amongst the excluded who found a way to create space and uh, elevate their own voices. It's a uh, it, it, it's a good reminder to uh, it, it's a good reminder to us all that that in uh, in in many cases we we need to think about who is uh, who is at the table and and who isn't at the table and and who do we not even think about when we think about the table. So um, thank you for that th those lessons on on inclusion, Peter. <clears throat> 